In remembrance of the Fees Must Fall movement, and more recently the VITS protest where students were refused tertiary education on the basis of not being able to pay their fees, the struggle remains to this day where the youth are fighting for the right to have access to higher education. Today we speak to someone who saw the plea of university students and sparked a movement with his 10 Rand Goes A Long Way fundraiser to raise 1 million Rand to assist students with their school fees. To say nothing less, they ended up raising two million. You know, it takes a lot of conviction to do something good, especially when uh, so much is happening in the world, you know? So what I really want to know and just understand is what caused you to sit down and say, you know what, I'm seeing this happening. What can I do with my own resources that I have? I think what caused me to take a stand is due to the fact that I'm seeing it happen so frequently, so often. I mean, Fees Must Fall has been happening for more than three years. I think now it's sitting on five years. And I got to a point where if you're seeing something every single day, you're seeing students protest, you're seeing students on Twitter saying, guys, I just want registration done. And then I'll see myself inside. So when that this protest happened, I was like, okay, no, let me just check my bank. Let's see how many coins I have, you know, 10K. Let's, let's, let's do this. <laughs> yeah, let's, no, let's, let's, you yeah, know, let's, yeah. let's, let's try and empower. It's in the fag, man. You register. You know, you know. Mm-hmm. And with that, it just opened so many doors and opportunities. And I was just like, wait, hold up. There's something missing here. And I think what I love so much, and we spoke about this in the previous conversation, is the fact that we really need change agents within our communities as Mm -hmm. young people. You know, there's that thing where when you see somebody doing good, somebody your age, it inspires and ignites something in somebody else that is watching you, you know? Mm -hmm. And we saw that a lot, especially Every I was watching, I didn't watch every single live video, but I was following the Girl, journey you were on the live with us. where people mm. were joining. I saw Kim join in. I saw so many people join in and donating. And you were like, hey, when a friend put in this amount of money, you know, what do you what have you seen in that process? And like the change that really comes about getting your friends and encouraging them to do good. This initiative, honestly, was something that we all didn't expect. Yes. Even myself, I didn't expect that it was going to be this big. I didn't expect it to be what it is today. And in us navigating our way through understanding this tender goes a long way, it was literally, you know, as you said, calling Kim and saying, Kim, girl, I need you on this live. Ricky, I need you on the live. Sia Khaleesi, baby, baby daddy. I'm calling baby daddy. That's that's my baby daddy. <laughs> and, you know, calling those type of people and say, guys, listen, because as a public figure, you have a responsibility to always convey a, bit, a, a message. It's either positive or negative because people follow you for your likes, what you do, what you wear, how you speak. I mean, people follow me for my comedy, etc. And... If your favorite personality says, guys, listen, I need 10 rands, come through. You were like, oh, Sir Khaleesi asked me for 10 rand. Oh, okay, yeah. let's, let's go, you know? Yeah. And it got me realizing that when we all come together for a solution, mm-hmm. we all can, can make a solution happen without waiting for a solution to drop from the sky. Without having to have that hectic structure without oh. having to do too much you know we literally didn't even have a structure we started ring 12, lights r- phone data come over to oh, my house all of that you know? right. and i think what i want to highlight as well is the art and the beauty of collaboration yes. because you didn't do this alone It started off with just your friends and then you guys got these other organizations involved. You had to get a group of people to audit. You had to get a foundation itself to actually interact with the students. So what impact have you seen with the Arts of Collaboration A? And how have the students been impacted by this two million rand that you guys raised? Two million, baby, two million. Um, Great question. You know what? I... 
At first, I didn't understand the art of collaboration, working with someone until I did this initiative. And I was like, so when you bring your two apples and I bring my two bananas and your friend brings a watermelon, it's a fruit salad. Yes. You know, not any and we all have different niches, all different markets. I mean, I my market is predominantly 18 to 24 females and your moms, etc. So your colleagues market is, I believe, rugby players or anyone that's a sports fan, you know. And when he joined my life, I got sports guys watching me. They're like, girl, this is my moment. This is where now I get to say I am La Cizu and this is the collaborating moment. Mm. And with that, I realized that when we all come together, singing one song in one hymn book, we can make change instead of waiting for the government to make changes. Because I mean, we had to, because personally myself, I'm not a fundraiser. I've never fundraised in my life. Yeah. I don't know where to start. I literally was like, you know what? Lord, take the wheel. We had to even go on Google and say, which organizations deal with students, bursaries, have systems of universities? Because we sat and we had a meeting because it's not even just my work alone. Mm. It's myself, Sibu Mabena, Ayanda Mantomazane, Mklongo, uh, Takis, Nkateko Denwedi, you know, all of us, we came together and we're like, okay, we raised two million rand. Okay, so now, you know, we need an auditor because yeah. in South Africa, our land, we yes. know that. <laughs> <laughs> ah, 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 you know, you know. So we're like, let's let's just be honest to Godly and make sure that everything is to the T. We had to Google auditors. We had to find organizations that deal with this. Um, and we found that, okay, cool. There's a, an organization called Fundi. And they deal with students. They offer bursaries. They have the data is from university to check if these students are registered. Because we want to. We wouldn't want to be rewarding someone who's not registered. Because, I mean, there's so many chances out there that we'll be like, girl, I'm registered. And you say, yeah, here's 20 Tawa. Kelsa Diamond Walk, Jaini Choli. You know? <laughs> yeah. So, um, we had to just then collaborate and say, guys, Fundi, please help us because they actually charge for these services. I mean, of course, we all have to charge to live. And they were like, we will do it because we'll do it for free because it is an initiative that no one has ever thought about. For sure. And it's beautiful, the work you're doing. And I was like, girl, come through. And they facilitated the whole thing. They contacted the universities. They made sure that the students that we randomly picked on a YouTube live because we literally went on random.org Mm -hmm. We pressed the button and it said number 62. We said, who is number 62? How? Don't be guy, he say. Yeah, you know, okay. Father's daughter. Love your work. So, yeah. Shoot is your shot. there a future for the 10 Rand Goes A Long Way campaign? And do you think that it could develop and become something bigger? If not now, perhaps in the future, near or far? Is there a future for the campaign? We are still like trying to debate and see if we're going to do it again. But if we do it again, how do we top off from the two million? Because the two million rand, we never, the goal was to raise a million, million rand. rand. We really were not expecting so much results and people to really pull through. Like that moment, that's when we all came together as South Africa. Because I think the last moment we had as South Africa coming together was during the World Cup. You're so right. The last time when we were all like, we're doing this. Yeah. And reflecting on that specific sentiment and just, you know, in highlighting June 16 and the youth of 76 and how they really all came together. I don't think that they expected for what they were doing on that day yeah. to be commemorated every single year. You know, so I think it's it's movements like this and yeah. it, it doesn't come out of, oh, I want to get cloud out of it. It is about you wanting to support other people that are just like you, yeah. that may have different circumstances or whatever it is, you know. So what I want to get your opinion on is, do you think that only organizations and companies should be responsible for providing bursaries to students? Or do you think that our communities and society in general should be more involved in those things? You know what? That is a very tricky question because 
when the ANC got into power, the first big promise they made was we're going to give free education to everybody. Till this day, that promise hasn't been fulfilled. Do we then expect corporate organizations to fund us? And why would we expect them to fund us? Why now they have that objective and why are we giving them that responsibility? The responsibility is upon us, all of us in this room. All of us in this room right now, if we can all... We will go a long way. We will go a long way. <laughs> now imagine in a university where they have 10,000 students, 20,000 students, times that by 10. That's 200,000, right? Literally. If we say, okay, university students and their families, just 10 rand, that's a million rand. And that million rand can be put towards, basically, it's a recycle. You pay for my tuition, I pay for yours. Yeah. Simple. The, the, the solution is within us. We need to stop as the youth looking for external solutions and be the solution. Because there's a high employ, uh, unemployment rate because there are no jobs. Yeah. There are no, like guys, unfortunately there's no jobs. The only thing you can do now is for you to fend for yourself. That's why the influencing marketing um, is striving so much because people are like, okay, cool. I've got a phone. I can download an app where there are these agencies. I can post brands. I can hold it like this, get a few thousands. That's work. Yeah. That's so beautiful what you said. And so I think in closing, to close off the conversation, is that us as young people really have a responsibility. We shouldn't only be looking at other people to do the good, but we need to be doing the work ourselves. But it starts at home. Exactly. Charity begins at home. Thank you so much for coming through. Thank um, you. It was great to get a bit of an insight on the 10 Rand Goes A Long Way campaign mm. that you guys started and just how organic it was, how natural and beautiful it was, and the fact that you guys didn't expect it. I never aspired it. Thank you so much though. And this Thank is you. for everyone. Just go play your part with your little 10 Rand, little. with your, I it doesn't even have to be monetary. You know, Literally. it could be giving your time to people, whatever it is. And shout out to everyone, even the auditors, they gave their time, they didn't, we didn't pay nothing. They just said, you know what, this is a great initiative. I wish this happened while I was still in school because I was struggling to finish off my tuition fees. So yeah. The convergence that I see between the youth of 1976 and the youth of today is definitely the passion for a cause that is greater than oneself and one's lifetime. We've had a conversation about accessibility to healthcare. We spoke about accessibility to education, tertiary education, and accessibility to basic things like school shoes and stationery. It was such an enlightening conversation, and we did tackle the problems and the issues that young people face, but we also touched on a few solutions. And so, in closing, basically what I can say is Happy Youth Month. It has been a wonderful month, and us as young people, you know, we we have a long way to go, but we're going to be good. So thank you for tuning in to the season finale of season two, Culture Conversations. My name is Lerai Rakoditwe, and it has been amazing. Peace out.